puzzling crime that we've ever considered. Just who is Darley Routier? Is she capable of killing her little boys? Did this woman ruthlessly stab her son and then slash her own neck to make it look like an intruder did it? Or did it happen exactly the way Darley said it did? Was there an attacker, maybe two, who invaded her home in Texas and now she is sitting on death row paying the price? Well, the experts will say what they will about this case, and you'll hear from them today. But the viewers told us that this story has become about perception. Watch. I was more convinced of her probable guilt then than I am now. I don't believe at all that she is remorseful about it. There was not enough emotion. I don't know anybody. I don't care how much medication that you're on who could watch and look at those horrifying pictures of these chopped up children and not have some kind of reaction, even if she didn't cry, and if she just went, oh, you know, and just was sure, expressing yeah. shock or something. I have depression. I am on antidepressants. Experience. I have gone through some big scares, big illness scares, terrible things where I feel awful on the inside, but the outside does not show it. I can't cry. But you know what? Even if she didn't shed a tear or have a reaction or raise an eyebrow, that doesn't make her a killer, does it? We have Darren, Darley's husband here. We have her mom. We have her mother-in-law. And I think the first question really should go to all of you. And Darren, you specifically, what, what does it feel like to hear audience members judge who you are, um, accuse your wife of things? Must be hard. It's real hard. I mean, I just, you know, the hardest thing to deal with is the fact that um, we're, we're all different on the outside. We're either different colors, different nationalities, different hair lengths. If, you know, this discrimination is what it is. I mean, we discriminate against each other no matter what we look like. It's just almost our natural um, ability to be able to just judge someone for what they look like and know nothing about the person that's inside or where they've come from or what they've been through and their experiences. You all are paying a horrible price, an unthinkable price. These two little boys, these, these beautiful angels are gone from your life. And every shred of your life as you knew it is now different. It's gone. The woman that you loved and still love is behind bars, a convicted murderer. You, um, your job, you were living in a beautiful house. You had things. She had jewelry. You had the hot tub. You had all of that going for you. Now that's gone. And yet your love for her is as strong as ever? It is. When you all go to see her, when you go see your, your little girl, what's that like? It's, it's real difficult because you try to give her hope and encouragement, but so many times she'll want to talk about Devin and Damon, and, and you know, that's difficult for her because she's so confined in there. And if, if she dwelled on that all the time, I think it would just drive her insane. I think she has to put that somewhere. But so many times when we go in to see her, we leave feeling more encouraged because she encourages us. Does she believe that she will get a new trial and she'll have a chance to say her piece, Cyrilda? We were so sure that she would not be convicted the first time. And when it was all over, the first time I visited her, I said, let me understand it. How can God let us down? And she said, you know, Mama, I guess it wasn't enough for me to be accused of this crime I guess I had to be convicted but being convicted doesn't make me guilty and if they kill me it doesn't make me guilty she said if they killed her she would be there with her sons yes. Damon and Devin she said I'll be there with them I don't want that to happen but that's the worst that can happen do to me well there are also reports that um, the court reporters life is being threatened all kinds of high drama continuing to escalate in this case that started there. We'll get to all the new evidence and, and we'll tell you about the court reporter in just a minute. I want to read to you from a book called Precious Angels and I'll tell you why. The woman who wrote this book is on my stage. She, you wanted this book to be damaging. Yes, I did. You wanted people not to shed a tear for Darley. I didn't want anybody to lose any sleep because she was where she was supposed to be. She writes, Darlie Routier was a woman doomed by having it all. 
She has the dream house, had the boat, had the diamonds, had the hot tub, and still she needed more. She constructed an artificial life from her pristine white carpets to the implants in her breasts. Once a doting mother who invited over all of her children's friends, she became a screaming tyrant who ordered the kids to stay the hell out of the house. As the young mother's dreams shattered one by one, her life became a hell on earth. Murdering two children seemed the only way out. My gosh. The woman who wrote those words, Barbara, you say now you don't feel this way? Not at all. What could possibly take you from this point to where you are now? Because I know things that I didn't know when I wrote that. Evidence? Evidence. Serious, tangible evidence? Very serious, tangible evidence. Okay. Tell us what it is, and then um, I'd like for, uh, like for you and Chris Brown, the author of a book about this case, to go through the evidence along with the family's assistance. What bits of evidence will we talk about in the show today? We'll talk about her injuries her that injuries. were not gone into in the trial. Okay. Uh, an adult uh, fingerprint in blood. That did not match Darley or Darren. But was consistent with her story. Um, other evidence um, that was mishandled or hidden. Um, one being in particular that I want to discuss um, is the bloody couch that she was lying on. A scuff mark? A bloody scuff mark, Chris? Uh, well, actually, it's, a, it's an edge of where uh, the blanket or pillow was actually laying, and there's blood all the way around it, but where it's outlined, there's not. So, uh, and also on the pillow, there's, there's blood on the pillowcase and also on the pillow. And they had actually said that she had slit her throat standing up at the sink, and that's not true either. We will run it all down with you, including the thing that got the audience yesterday, which was this sock. An athletic sock sort of like this was found 75 yards from the scene. Now, last time you were here, Barbara, you told me that you thought uh, Darley may have put the sock on like this mm -hmm. and may have, because her DNA was found inside the sock. Right. And may have smashed, done what with the sock on her hand? I believe she did it. Therefore, for her uh, skin cells to be in there, she would slip it on, just as you have. And the spots of blood, one of the boys right on top of the other, would have had to have gotten there when that sock made contact with their wounds. All right. In a moment, never before seen photos of Darley's injuries and the family feels that these photos prove she couldn't have inflicted these wounds herself. And then this Texas attorney will tell us why he believes that the new evidence is ridiculous. We'll talk some more. Come on back. A real true miracle that I'm here today. I mean, two millimeters within your heart artery is and just the way that they suggested that I would have to do this to myself. And it, it was so ludicrous to sit there and watch them and to keep and just think, are people really believing this? Apparently, Darren, the jury did believe it. They thought that she set this crime scene, that she cut herself to make it look like there was an intruder. We, we talked, we've talked before about your wife's emotional state and there was this note that has been called a suicide note where she's writing to the three boys and saying forgive me for what I'm about to do what was her state of mind there was there was a, another another note that she was writing uh, in her journal that she'd written about you and your relationship she said I love Darren with all my heart but sometimes I feel like I'm missing something the things I used to do when I was younger she talks about her responsibilities well, I never, I never read her diary. That was her private thing. And, I mean, I figured that, you know, that was information that was between her and her diary. Were you shocked when you found out about that journal entry? Yeah, I was. I knew about the journal entry. She called me that day. She was, she was blue. She was tired. She wanted, you know, me to come home and to help her with the kids. I left the office, went home. I saw that she was writing in the journal. She, you know, we, we cried. I got mad at her for feeling those type of thoughts. That was the first time that I ever knew about the journal. We cried about it. You know, I told her that this was very selfish of her to even feel this way. And then after that, everything was fine. I mean, we never talked about it again. It wasn't like we were just suppressing it. It was just that it was like a phase. It was a moment, you know. And it was, it was Darlie telling me that I need to help her a little bit more than what I had been because I was spending a lot of time at work. 
and three children are a lot of work. I mean, you know, it's, it's a lot, lot of work, work for two people. And how many people haven't thought about this maybe in a fleeting moment? I mean, if you're really honest about it, there are a lot of people in the United States that are on medication for depression. Well, maybe someone who's being medicated for, for depression would be dealing with some emotions that, that we, we can't really experience. But it was a said, contemplation. It wasn't an attempt. You, know, you said, it Darren, um, you've been quoted as saying you understand why an intruder may have come into this house basically and targeted your wife. Um, the quote was, she's a good-looking she's woman. She's beautiful. I mean, look at the photos. I mean, You said she, she had a beautiful body and she had, I think, big breasts was the yeah, quote. Yes, she did. And I've been mocked for even saying that. It's the truth. I mean, she's a, a 36 triple D. And, you know, uh, even, even, you know, Darlie is a very beautiful woman. I mean, men and women, a lot, uh, both of them, you go into the mall, I mean, they're both, they just turn their heads. I mean, they just, it, it so, was almost like people were just like So did someone come in then to her. rape her, to sexually assault her? I don't think that was the intentions. And you said earlier that nothing was stolen. Well, my two boys were stolen from us. It's not about material things. It's not about what you have. It's what your, your family is the only thing that you can always, in every way, hang on to. It's the only thing that's important in your life. And you're still hanging on? Every bit. Since you were here, you, you have your family memorialized in tattoos on your arm? Yeah. Can we see that? Sure. Since you were here, you added another. And then I have the baby. That's straight. And I did this one for a different reason. I think that's why. This is kind of like therapy to me, you know? After the boys were, were murdered, I had the boys' picture put on there as a memorial, but also to remind me that I was still alive for me to feel even the pain. Is, is a feeling. When you're, when you're numb for so long, going through the grieving process, it's very difficult to deal with. Oh, I can't even imagine. I'm sure. I'm sure. I, I notice that a lot of people are very hostile to you, and I just want to tell you my heart goes out and hang in there and keep trying. You're right. There are a lot of people who've been very hostile. There are still a lot of people who say, this is all a show, that they're not facing the facts, that they're in denial. But there are others like Barbara Davis who've changed because of the evidence. So when we come back, let's go through it bit by bit. <clears throat> See you right back here. We were hoping to go in there and find her not guilty. We don't want to see a mother do that. I'll I'm tell you wrong. that if, if my children were feet away from my head, the first child may have gotten stabbed, but the second one, he wouldn't have gotten near without getting through me. Well, now, that pretty much gets us to an interesting point. That juror sentenced Darley to death because they didn't, part, I shouldn't say because, the jury did not see all of the photographs that would indicate that Darley had possibly struggled with an intruder. In this article defending Darley, this is from the uh, Dallas Observer, Ann Zimmerman wrote this, and there are photos in here of Darley's wounds. Now. You're still impartial on your... I feel very strongly both ways, right? You could argue either side of it. Absolutely. There's you found these, these photos to be the most compelling thing uh, to allude to a possible intruder? Exactly. I mean, she looks like she struggled with somebody. Um, these bruises on her arms. Um, it's what made me look into the case further. People um, said, Darren, that they thought you hit her with a baseball bat to get the bruises on her arms. That's <laughs> ridiculous. But the only... And you think she would be on death row and allow me to just stay out here and be free? I mean, come on. Well, Besides, if it was baseball, it would have been, you know, a whole... You know, we're talking about she was bruised from here all the way up into her breast That's area. That's because the prosecutor couldn't arms. explain the bruises yeah. to Chris, the Chris, and let's look at the photos. Could we please? I want to show them on the, the big screen for the audience here. The bruises were actually on both arms. And also, the time factor uh, involved is that the police picked her up. Here is the cut on her neck that came two millimeters from her carotid artery. Here's the stab wound down here. Um, go on to the next frame. Now, hang on, hang on. Stay there for a second, because let's say that you put, that you'd cut yourself, and she's right-handed. She has a knife in her right hand. Would that be the angle, or would it be the angle of someone around your neck coming up, up right. this way? Now, she was stabbed in the arm, so you have to remember, she stabbed herself with the arm. She would have had to switch hands, stab herself in the shoulder, and then she'd have to cut her throat. Come on. Get real. Okay. People are out here saying she no. could do that. 
You, okay, now remember. Said, nope, you don't have a problem with this. Okay. I don't have a problem with thinking that if she was stabbing her own children, that could be kick marks on her arm that they were fighting. I, I From a 40 pound baby. Okay, I'm there's a 40 pound baby. There's also there's also and bruises. Yes. Ma'am, there's also bruises on her on her wrist right here that are so it's in the the carpal area to where uh a kick wouldn't actually do that from both sides. Well, see, that's another point, and too. I believe, just like you do, all of those things could have happened. Right. And, in fact, I espouse them in my book because they are plausible. It could have happened. Could have happened. Okay? But the injuries I did not see are the ones that really troubled me that he's beginning to talk about. Now, this, this photo here actually goes all the way up to her wrist. Now, this... This is a, a tight photo of it, but it actually goes all the way down to her armpit. And, on, and it goes from here all the way to here. And then on her other arm, it goes from here all the way under. So, Barbara, you're saying these, these wounds were more compelling to you? Go ahead, Sarley. Well, I was Rilda. just saying, uh, you know, they're just so extensive. You know, you just can't. It's not one of those photos. It's all of them. You have to look at all of them. Look right. at Chris. Now, well, the thing I... is, they were compelling. And my question is this. Why didn't the prosecutor show them? Because they couldn't explain them either. Right. Phil, you're an attorney. Why didn't the prosecutor show them? There's no new evidence in this case. All of the evidence, in fact, everything that's in Chris's book is from what he took from the court records. The judge let him make copies of all these But the pictures. jury didn't get to see it all. Well, the jury may not have chose to see them, but the same problem is, is the defense attorney. Hey, well, no, listen, listen. All of this is in the evidence. The problem here is, is this is not new. This is not new evidence. Well, we haven't got You're to the Yeah, yeah we haven't gotten there yet, Bill. Just hang in there with us. <laughs> I just don't think that he is, is he's leaving out parts, just parts of what really happened. I mean, if there are 900 photos and only 400 is shown, and the defense objects to that in, at the trial, um, it's not because the jury chose not to see them. It was because they were not given the opportunity to That's see them. Right. right. <laughs> And that, that actually goes, that goes back with the, uh, the surveillance tape. The judge allowed the surveillance tape not to be seen because the, the lead detectives did take the fifth. Listen, listen to this. We talked about photos that, that were not shown. Uh, we talk about a transcript that may not have been accurately delivered to the jury. Well, there was an anonymous letter that was sent from jail to a district judge that reports convicted killer Darley Routier said the court reporter who prepared the trial, tran the trial transcript will be killed if Routier's appeal is not successful. Someone is going to kill the court reporter if she does not falsify her record so she'll get a new trial. The court reporter's life is in jeopardy if you, the court, make her verify the accuracy of the court records. It, what is that enough to get a new trial if yeah. the court reporter, well, ha there weren't accurate yeah. records? It very well could be, and, I, and probably leaves it in all, in all candor, the best issue in this case right now from an appellate standpoint is this transcript right. aspect of it. The question is, we come out here, and, I, and before I came out, y'all were talking about her taking the fifth about not having any, ta any tapes, when in fact she did. That, that doesn't play into your hand as, a, as, as defending her as far as this is concerned, because if the tapes exist, then there's not going to be that issue for a new But trial. the issue is this. The jury asked to see Darren's testimony. Now, out of 1,400 pieces of the transcript, all 1,400 pages was wrong. So then they went ahead and they did it for their extension. Now, the jury asked to see his testimony, and I'm if not, everything's Chris, wrong, I'm not arguing with you about that. And okay. they can't take the jury back and say, oh, by the way, we want you to look at this again. I'm not arguing with you about that. I'm saying your argument now that there's something to do with this court reporter by taking the fifth when she really didn't have the tapes doesn't help your position at all. With no, her. it doesn't. If the tapes no. are, are there, that's only going to hurt your position because no. then you are going to have a transcript. That's no, because... not right, but the tapes prove that the transcript is wrong. It's wrong. So that you she don't just have the information. Arbitrarily the arbitrarily typed video, in what the, you want. The audio yeah. tapes prove now, the transcript is wrong. You know yes. what's not the admissible? Audio what's not yes. admissible at a trial, of course, are Isn't polygraph that tests. But there were polygraph tests given to both Darley and Darren. We'll talk about the results of that right oh. after this. Stay tuned. Oh. What if this regression therapy demonstrates that the state was right, that Darley did do it? Is the anybody prepared to hear that? It's not right no, because it's, not right. it's how they built this case up. They said Darley went crazy and, and was depressed and because she was too heavy and wasn't the center of attention. Well, that's the biggest yeah. crock I've ever heard in my life. But none they of you had were, no motive. None of you were afraid to take this no. next step. 
the next step we were talking about was regression therapy so that Darlie could remember exactly what had happened that night. Did you do the regression therapy? Yes, we did two sessions. What happened? Well, there are five points that uh, they're going to use in her writ. But the problem is, is when we went to the, um, the warden and asked for permission, because to do forensic regressive therapy, you have to have a videotape on the subject as soon as the doctor walks into the room and then you never shut that videotape off. Well, everybody in the world has been allowed in there with a videotape, but when she consulted her legal uh, people, they said, no, you can't have a video camera in there. So the doctor took another doctor in with them, so there are two, and that's part of her appeal. But we do not know if they will allow it, uh, if it'll be accepted by the court. Did she remember details? There are five points that prove Darlin is not lying, that she was attacked, that there were intruders, but that will be brought out. If there's a new trial? No, it'll be brought out, hopefully, in the appeal. Or if we, we may not have to have appeal if it's overturned with this court reporter. But. Okay. Barbara, the whole audience is saying, and they're absolutely right, we want to know what it is that caused you to turn on this because you were as far in the, bed, in the place of guilt as you could possibly be. Right. Go. Right. The very first, some of the very first witnesses in this trial that the state brought out were the doctors and nurses that tended to Darley. And I was interested in what they had to say. And they told me that she was unemotional and cold and uncaring. They said she looked at the corpse of her son in the trauma unit and had no response. Right. And one of the things that had an impact and it wasn't just one thing it was thing after thing one of the things was when i saw the focus notes that these nurses keep what did the notes say well i brought some here to read to you because that was very damaging they said she didn't very. want to hold baby drake exactly um this is uh, from the focus notes of a nurse uh that took care of darley patient Crying, visibly upset, very emotional, periods of angry sobbing, family at bedside with chaplain, patient very tearful. Then the nurse noted at 1200 uh, when uh, they were concluding their shift, patient continues to weep, which meant Darley literally cries throughout the whole entire seven-hour shift. When it came to the testimony, this is exact testimony. The state asked, when she was in your care, did you notice that she seemed upset to you? Answer, she was, her eyes were tearful, but she had a very flat effect. Didn't seem to have a lot of emotion. Now, so you're saying it's what they didn't hear that would have changed it. No. Would that have changed it for you, audience? No. Okay. All okay. right, let's come out here and, and we'll take okay. it bit by bit. Be right audience. back. told me that um, you were persuaded to think more favorably of Darley after hearing the nurses notes yes. Yes. most most people were you're still saying no no because it still makes her look bad because she wasn't showing that much of a remorse but she didn't do anything she didn't understand that the nurses lied make her yeah understand. but this is another this is a great example of being able that the jury didn't know this they only saw and heard what they were told they didn't know before and they were shown the focus notes but it didn't really it, they didn't really follow it they they didn't uh it was kind of complicated to go over and um what they were also told and what they knew was that they had a brainstorming session before the district attorney with all of the nurses in the same room. Mm -hmm. They showed them all the evidence and said, hey, Chris, that really happens in every prosecution. In every case. In every Isn't that something? So tampering with witnesses is no, something that we Well, it did happen on our side. Well, I don't know about I you, but I, I would have a problem with that. Yeah, they did do us that way. If that, if that was the case, then why don't they just let everybody sit in the audience as they do the court, but instead they take all the witnesses out and bring them in one well, at a time so they don't know what they the other one is saying. Chris, Chris I, I've been doing this for 25 years. I have personally tried 13 death penalty cases. This is not my first rodeo. 
for you to sit here and think that there's something unusual of getting the everybody state in the room. Of Texas to getting everybody together, or it's the defense lawyers for that matter. All the way all together. together. That's and just the way have them change their mind. We were well, no, out of what they wrote two days after I'm what happened. Just that six you're some more Let me ask this. I want to ask Barbara something real quick. Ten years, better than ten years, she worked for the district attorney's office. Barbara, on how many occasions in the ten years you worked there, were you a part of a conspiracy with the police department, the district attorney's office, the judge, and the defense attorneys oh. to put somebody on death row? Yeah, a victim's Never. advocate. Let's to believe this, you would have to believe that so her role would be a very big one. No, 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 no. I'm so shocked no. by all this. To believe this, you'd have to believe that the Rowlett Police Department we do. That the district attorney's office is one of the largest DA's offices in this country. The, everybody involved on the defense team, I guess, because they didn't do their job, and a district judge all colluded together to put a housewife on death row for killing two But wasn't there yeah. tremendous pressure to solve this case? There's tremendous pressure to solve all cases. But what they do, Lisa, is they did in this case is this crime scene was contained. There was nowhere oh, else to go. Yeah. Well, oh my. You know, now you know, guys feel, talk about that. Talk That's about the contamination. Yeah. Yeah. These, these things do not happen in a sterile vacuum. You've got two kids that so one's dead the and one's dying mistakes. on the floor. Now I've listened to the you. The police don't make mistakes. Sure they, they do. Sure they do. Ah, there's nobody representing Absolutely. more police officers. And, Absolutely. And they're human. But what you don't do is you don't about a, a crime scene that people have walked through when you've got victims in there and potential other intruders at that point in time and the police are doing their jobs. The paramedics are doing their jobs. The police are doing their jobs. And they're trying to save any life that they can. You don't worry about whether you're moving a table or contaminating the crime scene. That's secondary to the preservation of human life. And that's what happened here. Let's look at this yeah. fingerprint. Okay. All right, here's this a is, fingerprint that yeah. did not match what, Charlie. What was interesting about the, new, or the evidence was that there was 14 fingerprints found in the home. Two of them were in blood. And what they did was they said that it wasn't enough to run, so they didn't run them. And uh, my experts say Chris, it's why, eight the, and twelve. The, the defense now, attorneys have the finish. right to do that. I understand that. However, they didn't. Now, the thing well, is, right. is that You're the Plano right. Police Department the was uh, there's a gentleman there that was asked to see if they matched Darren or Darley fingerprints, and they didn't. Okay. Now he never spoke to the defense. I, I spoke to him, and he's on the chain of custody. Now here's uh, the other one that was on the table. In the trial, now the reason uh, in the trial. James Crone says this is a child's print. And the, and the reason why he can say that is because they didn't fingerprint the boys during their medical examination, or their, uh, during, in the coroner's office. They didn't fingerprint the boys at all. They have no idea. So, yes, he can say that this is a boy's Bill, print. Bill, could that well, have been an intruder? The fingerprint? Could that be These be fingerprints are so high up theory? on the door of what you saw over there. Sure, the intruder went out. It, that's it little could boys could reach that, up that high. It, it could well, support any theory that yeah. anybody wants to believe, I guess. That's the bottom line. The bottom line is, though, is this jury in Kerrville that heard all the evidence, the credible evidence, the admissible evidence, this was available to them, it was available to the prosecutors, it was available to the defense attorneys, and they chose to not believe that evidence. That's a right of every jury in every case. And all they were after four, four, after they four and a half weeks of evidence, evidence, what they did was they, they went into the deliberation, it was eight to four, they re rewound the silly string tape nine times and then came up with a victory. Ver guilty verdict and forget the four weeks of testimony out of what you saw earlier with the tape is pretty compelling now here are excuse me here are the questions that were asked in the polygraph test and when we come back we'll tell you how they were answered by Darren and we can ask him today too did he know who placed a bloody sock down the alley behind the family's rally at home did he stab his wife could he identify anyone who attacked his children we'll be right back We're so close to it up here on the stage. I want to get a reading from the audience as to where, where the questions are and, and what you need to know now. Um, I was just wondering why well, the officer approaching the murder scene, knowing that somebody was leaving, they said that somebody yeah. was leaving that area, nothing. Okay, we haven't there. talked about that. That's a good question. Waddell says, the first officer, that there was someone leaving the house when he arrived. Yeah. Someone without a shirt on? He actually said yeah. it was Darren. But then Chris digitized the 911 tape, and you can hear yeah. Darren throughout the entire 911 tape. He said Darren didn't so leave it was the scene. not Darren. Darren didn't leave the scene at all until after the police and ambulance got there to go across the street. 
But he was on the tape in the beginning, in the middle, and also in the end. There was no other time. He's, he's the intruder. Truly, Wydell sure. is the only one that really said the intruder, and he walked away. Well, that's what we'd like to know. Who was this person? It seemed like out of all this time, they should have came up with somebody, a description of something, But you know, someone. it was never addressed in the trial. Well, there were no bloody footprints leading... That was another thing that looked bad for Darley. Am I right that there were no bloody footprints leading out the back where she said the intruder escaped? Actually, there was. There was blood in the garage. Is that well, what this is, Chris? Uh, no, this right here actually uh, is part of... This is Damon right here. He's laying down. All his wounds are basically in this direction. And when you stab, you have a straight uh, line on your knife. The guy either had to be so that's in this area saying. or this area. <laughs> and what happened was is I found that there was a, a footprint here in the blood that the blood actually goes into. So the, the boot now, print Chris, was actually you, there. Now, before, before I finish, from a forensic this, standpoint, this, let me finish. Let me finish. Or is this your idea? This, this right here was also blood that they had talked about. This right here is the imprint of the shoe uh, that was in the other well, photo. I mean, is that a friend? You've had a forensic expert that's told you that? Let, let me finish. Well, well, so I never going to get yes through this. No, that's just get a yes or no. Yeah, okay. This is right here. This is on their film. This is on their photo. Your uh, I understand, but you, uh, throughout your interpretation, exactly. And I say that in, in the your book. interpretation, though. That's right. Okay. But the only thing is, is that there are no boots in the house, and the Routiers didn't own any boots. How do you know it's on the boots? prime time line? Okay. Was a bear I actually that was went and printed that out on the computer, and it, and the lines actually line up with the the marks that are on the door leading out. See, they testified that there would actually be blood on the bottoms of the feet, but there would be blood on the top, and when the door has marks of a ridge of a boot print. If they could identify Bruno Mogley's shoes in the OJ case, you'd think they could identify this what was happened not here. This was not even an issue. Let me finish. This, what, Darren? This was not even an they issue. Testified, they testified that within 20 minutes of them walking in on this crime scene, they had already made up their mind it was Darley and it was a done deal. And that was testified There was no court. one looking for the intruders. There was no, no investigation. There was no, only to be tested what the prosecution wanted to have tested, and we did not have the money to have tested that would prove Darley's innocence. And that's, that's the right. Thing. If we'd had money, right, let, it would have happened. The audience is, is I, I talked about the polygraph. In Chris's book, this was, from, this was a, from a news report. Darren, your quote is saying, I have nothing to hide. I mean, if you're innocent of what they're accusing you of, then you're more likely to participate in the test to prove they're wrong. Well, you did take the polygraph test. I did. What were the results? They said I failed. They said you failed. I read the questions that, that you were asked. Do you have a, a, re a reason as to why you think you failed? I was coerced into taking one. Then I was threatened to take one. In you fear were interrogated that, yeah, for about I'm, an hour and I'm a half. I was interrogated before. by a police officer. I have a real problem with police officers. I'm, a, I'm in fear everywhere that I drive. Um, you know, I go, I take it. After the interrogation, I'm all upset. Now, this, sick. Was, this was a polygraph, though, that was requested by the family, and it was a friend. No, we didn't request. No. Well, Perdo, I mean, the guy that's working, it was... He I said mean, it was hey, no long I was idea. there. What I was there for all said. those hours. Darren had not eaten in about 36 hours. He would not... He had nothing but a Dr. Pepper. And he was... We thought... We were waiting out there for him. He came out as an hour and a half or two hours later. We thought it was over. They had just been in there telling him... All these things he has done, but these and how he did it before it started. This. No, we did he's not hire him. Believe me, I can tell you. He's, I jumped all over that you? man. Which, I did not hire that Pardo. man. Pardo. Pardo. The job. Working with him in the very beginning, and then the, in prime time live, you all changed your mind down the line. Right. He wasn't even involved during prime time live. No. Well, no, no, no. In, in the report that I got, so they gave you, I was the there. Interesting, there isn't it? We all know enough about it to form our own opinion. We'll be back to tell you about Darren's remarriage to Darley behind bars. All right, stay close. Yes. Barbara feels that what many of you said to me, she still doesn't think she's had time to address why she's changed her mind. Let's have no interruptions. I changed my mind because of the evidence that I saw. Let's start with uh, the injuries. We've talked about those. Um, I would have loved to have seen her necklace, which everybody claimed that if it happened, like she said, there would be nicks in the chain. But there were no nicks, I was told, and the jury was told, but there are two nicks, two definite nicks in the necklace, pretty much positioned where they would be if she were laying flat. The other thing that is real important to me is I was told by the state 
that if this occurred the way she said, and she didn't do this over the sink, that, and she did it laying down on the couch, there would be blood on the couch. Where's all the blood? Well, I've seen the couch, and there's blood all over it. Now, my question for, one of my questions for Bill is, they released that bloody couch and, and a, a chair with just as much blood on it to this family. Now, I, I know personally there is a chair that a doctor was murdered in mm. that is still there after 15 years in the evidence room in Tarrant County. Why would they release this bloody evidence that should support her story to this family who washed it off and sold it for her defense money? The issue is, is whether people are involved on both sides of the docket, prosecutors and defense attorneys, that prohibit that from happening. Mm -hmm. There's not a good reason for why it did happen. If, if life is perfect. And it's not. We started out Especially by saying... Especially not in these kind of cases. We started out saying this was a case of perception. Mm -hmm. Tell me, when we come back, how your perception of who Darley is has changed. Because even though you turned your, changed your mind on the case, you weren't prepared to meet the person that you met in jail when you went there to ask for forgiveness. Right. We'll be right back the case here. They spent four and a half weeks. They may spend four and a half more months if they get a retrial. Let me take it back to where we began, which is a more emotional place. Darren, you've never once, you told me time and time again, thought, what if she did it? No. You're so committed to Darley that you have renewed your wedding vows? Yeah, we had, um, even before all this happened to us, we had started talking about getting remarried on our 10th anniversary because our first wedding was real small. We spent a maximum of $50 or $500, mm -hmm. had a sweet little wedding in the back. And of course, you know, we were financially doing a lot better and we wanted to really have a big party for the family and friends and, and uh, have Devin and Damon, you know, do the candles and the, you know, and just have a real nice formal wedding that we really never had. And uh, instead we had to uh, put our hands up against the glass and just look at each other and say, I love you, and I want to be with you for the rest of my life. And no matter what it takes, when I say, till death do us part, that's what I mean. Because I will be a man of my honor. I know we have left you with a lot of unanswered questions. I also know as we say goodbye on this show that this family is probably going to leave once again with tremendous frustration because that's the nature of the death penalty case that their loved one is involved in. I also know there'll be another chapter. Chris's book, let me remind you of it once again, Hal, if you'll put it up on the screen, it's called Media Tried, Justice Denied. And I know that Barbara Davis is going to go home. When this show airs, a lot of people are going to be plenty upset with her. Yeah. We'll get some questions as we say goodbye with our thanks to all of you. Till next time. The blueprint. Did they eliminate all the people that were on the crime scene investigating? All the cops, all the the, uh, um, the EMTs, all of the crime scene people. They didn't do elimination did they, prints on everybody. Did they do elimination prints? Then how do you know that you it's not there? That it wasn't does. people dropping through the jet through the scene. One of those the people that were involved in the crime scene had been the first thing they put out there. I would have explained it. The police Instead, they, they left it unexplained. If they didn't do comparisons, how would they, they know? They did do comparisons.